Hey, it's Angela, a daughter of Lilith. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a bit different. I'm calling it a get witchy with me. So it's sort of like a get ready with me, but I am instead preparing, instead of like makeup, I'm preparing um, spell work of some kind or some material for spell work or oil or something. And it's just sort of a chatty video. My friend Jasmine at Jazz What's Her Name uploaded a video about soft boys and certain toxic people um, <laughs> in her life and it's something that she and I have discussed at length um, and mostly we were talking about her ex and I've talked a bit about mine or one of my exes that was also a soft boy and <sighs> wow I didn't realize like how messed up everything with him was until I made this video so bear with me and just like understand that if you're here for the tea the tea gets hotter as you keep watching um, if you're not here for that that's okay you can kind of get through the m most basic parts of the spell like in the beginning um, and if you wanted to see like another video where I talk more about the spell specifically I can do that but it's here, it's uh, this video. I have wanted to make something like this for a long time and Jasmine and I have wanted to collaborate on this for a long time and we will eventually, well very soon, uh, have a collaboration video with both of us in it to talk about this issue. If you are here for some magic and some tea, turned out to be a little bit more tea than I planned to spill, but some hot fucking tea, <laughs> then stay tuned. If this video is not for you, that's perfectly fine. I have other videos that are a bit more on topic uh, that are definitely coming and don't worry, I'm not gonna turn into some drama channel, but this was a video that I definitely needed to make and I hope that the people who need to see it, see it. Basically for this Get Witchy With Me, I wanted to demonstrate a spell that could help someone through the same issue. Um, looking back on this video, I could have explained it a bit better, <laughs> but I hope that it at least inspires some of you, those of you who know how to write your own spells a bit more, and if I get enough requests, I can do like a better video that's just focused on that spell. Um, but I just, I find it really boring if I'm just talking and not doing anything, so I thought it would be better to do something um, for myself and also communicate why I'm doing it and extend, extend some of my experiences to you guys and maybe some of you know what I'm talking about and have experienced the same thing and you don't have to feel so alone, so. Without further ado, we'll just get into the video. The spell for me right now is about um, basically just me like having a pick up, pick me up kind of thing. So ordinarily, if this was a spell doom with a soft boy, I would be using a black candle, but because I am pretty much over all that crap, I am focusing on my own self right now. Um, and I just lost a pet that was very dear to me and that was very sad. Um, I'm just gonna use this purple candle. Basically, to get started, I am going to be using a couple different herbs and materials. Uh, again, you're gonna wanna use what makes sense to you. This spell is tailored to me, so if it doesn't make sense to you, don't use it. I'm gonna be using Jezebel Root, which is this wonderful herb. I feel for any time, Anytime you're a woman dealing with men's BS, like I, I love Jezebel Root for dealing with that. Uh, I'm also going to be using clothes. You can use ground clothes like this. I'm actually going to be grinding up. Well, I'm lazy. I was going to grind up whole clothes, but I don't think I will. Nah, not today. Uh, we're going to be using the powder. And I'm going to be using lavender. And then I have some other materials besides herbs I'm going to be using. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying what this is. This is this is personal, personal stuff that only I can make, and I'm not gonna tell y'all what it is. But to me, it's very empowering. I'm also using snake skin. 
um, the snake's very significant to me if you know anything about my practice and like my name on YouTube and like why, you know, the snake. Um, I mean, it goes beyond that, but for those of you who may want to use snakeskin and wondering why I'm using it, um, it's also, snakeskin can represent like shedding old baggage and being reborn in a sense. So I think that's perfect for this spell. I'm scatterbrained all of a sudden. Okay, I'm gonna be using, <laughs> I'm gonna be using all um, this oil I have made that again is very personal to me and I'm also going to be using a, um, a perfume that I wear a lot that I really love that makes me feel cool and um, yeah so I'm gonna be grinding up some materials and uh, chatting with y'all about about soft boys and toxic people so get a cup of tea and buckle up because I'm gonna be aggressively grinding into this mortar and pestle, okay? So basically, if you've never heard of a soft boy and you haven't watched Jasmine's video, a soft boy is... Someone playing music outside, I don't... Okay. Um, <laughs> a soft boy is... It's gonna move my entire table. Not like a regular fuckboy. Because a regular fuckboy, you know, they're pretty easy to spot and yeah, they're jerks, but at least they're honest about who they are, right? Soft boys are not honest about really anything. Um, they're deceptive by nature and when you first meet them, they are the kind of guy or person, you know, depending on what your thing is, but in my experience, it's been usually a man. They're the kind of guy that you fall for really quickly. Um, the passion between the two of you is very intense. And, you know, you just as you're thinking, okay, maybe I'm like diving in too quickly, then he says something like, I think I could love you more than I've ever loved anyone before. We weren't together for very long, mind you. And he said that in the middle of a fight we were having, but because I was Drinking that soft boy Kool-Aid, I fell for that crap in that moment. But we'll get to that in a, in a second. So basically soft boys are, they're like fuck boys, but what makes them so much worse is they go for the heart. You know, like fuck boys, they're just dudes who want sex and they're really dumb. You know, they're really dumb about how they get it. Whereas like they could be more mature and like know what they want and ask for it. They're a little bit manipulative to try to get it. But soft boys are people that are, I want to say that they have some kind of damage because I don't know how else you could treat someone else like this, but they seem to enjoy manipulating other people's emotions and specifically, um, specifically women's emotions that they're dating and they love really, uh, they love gaslighting you and making you feel like you're the crazy one and stuff and then like you like in hindsight you look back and you're like whoa what the fuck like he was the problem and even even in you're in the midst of it like I was you will have people around you saying like he's not worth this like he is garbage like stop but because you're you know you're chugging that Kool-Aid and you're ready to die um, <laughs> you are just like immersed in that um, emotionally abusive situation, right? So, <laughs> so, yeah, um, not only this, not only will the soft boy either break up with you or in my case, push you to break up with them um, after they've been ignoring you. Like, for, for, so like during the relationship, 
they will fucking ignore you for like weeks at a time. Uh, when you're like, even when you're like reaching out to them and stuff like they'll just like ignore you. And then when you're like, okay, I've had enough of this, we're done, you know, then they, <laughs> then they won't leave you alone. And the reason why my soft boy is named Snapchat is because he went the extra mile after I blocked him on everything of creating now he did not have a snapchat when i was with him but of creating a snapchat account to watch me basically and how i know it was him a couple different things so i, I had the suspicion it was him because the bitmoji looked a lot like him i was like well you know it could be anybody i'm not sure and but the username also looked like it was like a common username that he just like picked and I noticed that this new ad was watching all my stories and I was like okay well it's the rando on snapchat who, who knows right but the bitmoji looked uncannily like him he has some very distinct features that the bitmoji had and um I was like okay let's um let's investigate this right so I had I would post something and then I would wait till like certain hours of the day and I would post something else and it, it, he would watch all my stories immediately after I posted them. Immediately. Like before my friends even saw it. And I was like, okay, that's really weird even for like a stranger. Again, could just be a creepy stranger. So I was like, okay, well, let's just like talk to this person. And so I sent a message. I was like, hey, like you added me. I don't know who you are and no response i was like i'm pretty sure i know who you are but i just want to confirm that and then i see typing like the little like um the little thing saying like he's typing 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 delete typing 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 delete typing 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 delete and then doesn't say anything and i was just like real name, I know it's you. And as soon as I said that, right? Because like, if this if this wasn't him, then the person would be like, what are you talking about? That's not me. Like, at least they, they would they'd be like, no, my real name is this, not Snapchat's real name, right? And, but instead this account, when I said his real name and that I knew it was him, suddenly blocked me like and, and i'm talking immediately blocked me and i was like huh that's really strange and just because i wanted to see if he would be honest with me i temporarily unblocked him on facebook messenger and i was like what was that about and he was basically trying to pretend like he didn't know what I was talking about. And I was like, huh, maybe it's not him. Maybe it wasn't him, you know? And then I was like, I'm just, I'm talking about like right now. And like, what was this about? And he was playing dumb. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't mean to, con I'm sorry to contact you. I just had a weird experience on Snapchat that I am 90% sure with you. And then instead of just being like, huh, that's weird, or yeah, no way, because I don't have a Snapchat, or that's a really bizarre experience, um, just know I didn't bother you. Instead of saying any of those things, I see the little dots typing, 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 stop, typing, 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 stop, typing, 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 stop for like 15 minutes. Like 15 minutes. I, did, I like watched it on and off. And he finally says, yeah, not me. And I was like, okay, um, I don't believe you, but okay. And I just blocked him. And um, I forgot all about that and moved on with my life. What was it? Three months later, he calls me and then hangs up. And then sometime after that, it was officially, I think like, not officially, but it was about five months later. 
he called me while I had a date over and I said like whatever it is that you're trying to talk to me about we will talk about it later you know kind of thing and so the next day I called him back and it was such a shit show basically he didn't feel sorry for anything he really did and he just kind of wanted me to make him feel better about all the crap he did and the BS he pulled and it was really funny when the Snapchat thing came up because I had never mentioned anything about a Bitmoji to him, right? I said, you know, I've had enough of this, like you calling me and like creating like Snapchat accounts to watch me and stuff like that is really fucking weird. Mind you, I've never said anything about Bitmojis to him. He said in response, this is on the phone, so it's not like he could type it and delete it. He said, well, a lot of Bitmojis look like me. And then I was like, well, there it is. I knew it all along, but I have the confirmation. Like he's foolish and I was like, that's really funny. Um, basically he just wanted to, oh yeah, he also approached me in person once. I forgot to mention that. He approached me in person once, like before this, and I was just trying to enjoy myself and like mind my own business. And you know, you could just, you just can't, you can't fucking be in peace with these dudes. Like they, and now he's, you know dating someone that was in this inner group of friends that I was part of and like very, very quickly was dating her and there's a whole story with that, but um, it's crumbling. So I don't know, you know, whatever. I wonder if I can crush this, we'll see. So yeah, I had drained a lot of my energy on this guy and I really believed like that, you know, we can make things work. We had a lot of things in common. We both liked, you know, astrology and tarot, and he was very interested in witchcraft. Um, I'm glad I never taught him anything, really, uh, because holy shit. But, um, and now he's dating someone who identifies as a witch. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But, um, and he's suddenly saying things like, Happy midsummer, happy solstice, and it's just like, bitch, like you don't, you're not pagan, like fuck off. Um, <laughs> and like this is like this is in the span of no time at all. Like it's not like he learned anything, and he's suddenly like wearing a giant pinnacle, and yeah. So there's all that going on, and you know it's just sad to see like someone who manipulates you and hurts you and then to see like people that you called friends or like a community you were part of supporting someone like that and you know it's just sad really like i was already kind of fed up with that community for like different reasons but um it was just disappointing to me and like I'm not really angry at anybody else for his actions and for the woman he's dating now. I just hope that she um, gets out fast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it, <laughs> I had a lot of feelings. I had a lot of feelings that I'm not gonna share. Yeah, how am I gonna do this? I gotta wrap it around. It's gonna set on fire. Just know that if you use snakeskin and like candle magic, it will set on fire. I'm okay with that. This is all like metal and glass and stuff. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're just gonna stick it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm putting it around. It's a tiny piece anyway. Um, so basically, the 
thing that was really fucked up about Snapchat was I was already dating someone. I was in a polyamorous relationship with um, my ex-girlfriend, who I'm so close with, by the way. Um, and, you know, the way that we had things was like, you can fuck whoever you want, but as soon as you start dating someone, you need to tell me. And I was like, cool, I'm down with that. And so that was the same kind of role that I expected. And I made clear that I expected from other lovers as well, right? Like that if we start dating, like we have to tell, you know, if you start dating someone, you have to tell me. And if I start dating you, then like I need to tell like my partners, you know? And um, if you go on a date with someone, I want to know about it, right? Like you can do whatever you want, but I need to know about it so that we have this communication and I don't feel left out of things. And Snapchat and I had planned an evening together, and um, so I was waiting for him, and it was getting late, and so I texted him, like, where, you know, are you still coming? Is this still happening? And I don't even know, it, it must have been like at least 45 minutes before he got back to me or maybe even like an hour and a half. I don't know, my memory is actually kind of foggy on it. But it was a long time before he got back to me and then he said, he didn't say like, I'm sorry that I haven't got back to you. He didn't say, um, you know, like, oh, I forgot or yeah, I'm coming, or hey, give me more time. Nothing like that. He didn't say anything to acknowledge how I was feeling. Instead, he just said, out of the blue, without ever discussing with it with me beforehand, just said, I'm on a date. So, you know, how am I supposed to take that? That this, like, you blew me off and you went on a date with I assume a first date with someone, some stranger, and you didn't even tell me? And like, he only came to talk to me when he knew I was pissed. He didn't want to talk to me, you know, like it doesn't take a genius to figure out like my feelings are hurt, right? And then I'm like worried. He didn't want to talk to me then. Like, he only wanted to talk to me when I was angry at him and I didn't want to talk to him. And this has been a pattern with him. This he only this is just what soft boys do. They don't care about your feelings until it can affect their power over you and their control over you. So like when you're not invested in them anymore and it could look like you're the one who's gonna leave, that's when they swoop back in and try to fix everything. And that's exactly what he did. And at the time it worked. However, you know, I was not, I was not easy to win over. I, I, it was not easy to pull the wool over my eyes, basically. I'm gonna get my um, matches out here. My cauldron so I can throw the match in here. Like this candle. Um, so I, I was, I know it didn't seem like it because I was talking, but I was visualizing and stuff as I was doing this because I can multitask. I've, I've been practicing witchcraft for like 10 years. I know what the fuck I'm doing, okay? Um, <laughs> but um, actually, before I light it, I might put some more enchantment on it. But um, crazy because it's like you know in a poly open relationship where things are very flexible he still found a way to cheat on me in no sense and I know a lot of people are gonna comment and say like oh you can't cheat in a polyamorous relationship I call bullshit because cheating is about breaking agreements and he broke the agreement of communicating with me and he also lied to me and said he was free that to go somewhere with me that night um, at that time and he was instead being rejected by by this girl basically <laughs> he got like hardcore rejected she didn't even, she didn't even like sit down with him um and uh he yeah i don't know if what happened what 
you know, what he told me what happened on that date really happened. I don't know. Um, I am going off of what he said, but who knows what really happened because almost everything out of his mouth was a lie um, and continues to be a lie <laughs> because he keeps trying to reach me or whatever and now he's suddenly friends with all these people that were my friends um, where he wasn't ever before. He never gave a shit about these people before when we were together. Again, doesn't give a fuck about like making you happy when you're together doesn't actually want to be part of your life you're just an addition onto their life when you're together but as soon as you break up all of a sudden they have all these connections that relate to you out of nowhere and it's like what the fuck <laughs> um you know and The kinds of manipulation that went on with him were terrible and I was in a very vulnerable state like what Jasmine said like they come in when you're most vulnerable and I was homeless so <laughs> I had a car I could like you know go where I needed to go and my my girlfriend at the time was very good about like letting me stay with her when she could, but technically she was homeless too. She just like had like a, a backup kind of place to go and I was staying there with her sometimes. And so I was kind of bouncing between like sleeping in my car, being with her and sometimes being with him. And um, you know, when I met him, I was very like kind of drunk and it had admitted that I was homeless. So like he knew that right off the bat. And um, he compared me to his abusive I don't know what she was really like I never met her his abusive ex by the way if they're still like having a toxic relationship with their ex stay the fuck away from them like because he would call his ex wife almost every day or she would call him every day and I excused it at first because they have a child together and I just thought they were communicating about their child and who gets to, you know they didn't they weren't raising the child the child was adopted but they got like visitation time and I understood that they wanted to visit the child together that made sense to me that didn't seem weird to me but what was weird to me was how they, they would call each other and they would fight and like you know, I, I didn't even know her name. Like, I, maybe he did tell me, but I don't remember her name. And like, and I remember saying to him, I'm like, why do you keep talking to her? Like, why don't, why don't you just let it go? Like, why don't you set some boundaries? Why don't you say like, why don't you just not answer her when she calls or whatever? And like, he just like gave some bullshit excuse and never ever like, and there was one fight we had where, you know, I was calling him on his shit and then he compared me to his ex who apparently, you know, she didn't like, she had like a heroin addiction and she had a lot of problems. Um, and like, he made her sound basically like, she was evil you know I, I again I never met her I don't know what she's really like I don't even know if that's even true um, because again like every word out of his mouth is a fucking lie so I don't know if it's true at all or if there's like truth wrapped up in lies or whatever um, another big red flag was like she was associated like his ex-wife was associated with um, a social justice center and by her story that she told the people there, they kicked him out. And this is something I should have paid attention to, that he got kicked out of a social justice center because of some things that he did to her in the, in, by way of her version of the story. Um, when I was invested in my relationship with him, he admitted to me that he had hit his ex-wife and now, he framed it in a way that made it sound like he was defending himself. Um, but in hindsight, again, I'm like, well, defending yourself from what, though? Like, you may, you purposely, like, had ambiguous language, so I would, you know, like, saying abusive and not specifying whether it was, like, emotional or physical abuse, for example. It's, like, one way that people can be very, like, vague and, like, 
make you think a certain way. And because, you know, I would call him like emotionally abusive, but I, I would give someone backstory, you know, to so they understand what kind of emotional abuse I'm talking about. I don't just like go around calling Snapchat abusive. Like, yeah, he had admitted to hitting his ex-wife. Um, He was not a fan of using condoms. That was another thing about him. And then when I learned that his ex-wife had, I, I, I had had sex with him once without a condom. And then I learned that his ex-wife was apparently addicted to heroin. I was like, why didn't you tell me that? You know, because like she could have been sharing needles with somebody. And then if you don't fuck with condoms on, like, you know, I could have anything, right? So. That was sketchy and irresponsible of him. Um, I've tried to like tell people the truth about him, but because he's dating somebody who is like in the inner circle or whatever, like nobody listens. And they're all like, oh, he's just a nice guy. And I'm like, no, like, no. And when they break up, because they will break up, because um, I don't imagine that she'll put up with him for too long. Um, the truth will, at least some of the truth about his character will come out. Um, but yeah, so, and then maybe, then maybe if um, his current girlfriend now, if she breaks up with him and like needs some support, maybe she'll see this video and like get some ideas to, I know she um, identifies as a witch too, so maybe she'll get some ideas to do a, a spell to heal herself. Um, I know I wasn't very specific on like what I did here. Again, this is a uh, get witchy with me, so I just coined that. Did I coin that, or is that, or does that already exist? I don't know. So, without further ado, we're lighting this motherfucker, and um, we're letting it all go. Okay. Whew. Now, just know that there is an abundance of love in the world. And uh, this is just, this doesn't have to be about romantic relationships either. This can be about friends or anything, but like there's an abundance of love in the world. And this person, if someone makes you feel like they're the only one that's gonna love you um, this way, and that if you lose them and you lose your chance at love, then they're not the right person for you. They're lying to you and they're manipulating you and they're not the right person for you because there is an abundance of love in this world and like, you gotta love yourself enough to walk away. That's, that's it, really. So, um, I wish y'all the best and thank you so much for watching this video. I'll come out with some more pick a card readings in the future, hopefully soon. And I will also come up with a little bit better spell tutorials. I am sorry that the magic part of this is probably a little bit muddied and confusing and got lost in the storytelling part. Uh, but I hope that this inspired you to um, empower yourself and that's, that's, you know, spend time on yourself and loving yourself and really look within if you're dealing with someone like Snapchat or Broflake in Jasmine's video um, and that you can uh, do what's best for you and, you know, if you have friends around you that are trying to warn you about somebody um, listen to them like you don't have to believe them at face value but do take into consideration like what they're saying and where they're coming from and ask them questions and that can be uncomfortable to do and we really love someone and we care about them and we want and we see the good in them you know like but if you have to continue defending somebody um then maybe that's a sign that like you're making excuses for them and um that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing so, again, thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.